Hello and welcome to this video on the new Power Query data types. This feature of Power Query enables us to create our own data types similar to those that you can find on the data tab of your Excel ribbon. You may already be familiar with the stocks and geography data types. In this video, we will look at how to create these data types, how to access their information to create additional columns in a table, and also in your Excel formulas. Now, the example I'm using here is a fundraiser dashboard that I created as part of the Excel hash 2021 contest. And you can see an overview of that in the link in the description of this video. Essentially, we have a bunch of staff who have ran and walked some miles, as many as they can in a month, to raise money for charity. And they're split into four different teams and the top two runners money was given to their charities. Now we need to get data for all these participants and that is where our data types come in. It's coming from a different Excel workbook. So let me click data, get data from file from workbook and I will navigate to my participants workbook to import that data. Now both this Excel hash workbook and that participants workbook are both provided in the description of this video. So please download them to follow along with this process and to practice it. If I select participants and click import, the navigator window opens. I will select the competitors table and transform data to open Power Query. Now, I'm not planning on going through any transformations here in Power Query, although obviously those features are available to us. All I want to do is convert these columns, all of the columns in my example, into a rich data type. So I will hold down the shift key and click the last column of this table. So they are all selected and then click transform tab and on the end, create data type. When you click create data type, we get the option to name the data type and also which column to display. Now the name of the data type, I will name it participants and the display column, I will use the name of the participant. So when we click OK, all of those columns are combined into one record, one data type. And I will now close and load this to a table on a worksheet. The table will be on an existing worksheet and that worksheet is named competitors in A1 there. So with that loaded, let me switch to the competitors worksheet and here are the data types. So multiple columns all combined into one. So it's reducing the clutter on our worksheet here. And if I wanted to see the additional information, there are a few different approaches for that. One of them is simply to click the data type icon next to their name. So for Ursula, if I clicked the data type icon, it shows a card and I can now see the team that she was a member of, uh, the charity she wanted to raise money for, her distance ran and walked in both miles and kilometers, and also some information about Excel and her, her preferred food choice. I can click it again to remove that card. And we can also add information into a physical column on this sheet just as you would normally in classic Excel use. Now there are two main ways of doing that. One of them is to use that icon just next to the header of this column right now. If I click that icon, it lists 
the different columns of this data type. And I could maybe choose miles to display the number of miles logged. Another way would be to enter the header of what you want. So if I type fav Excel formula into cell C1 here, that table will expand. So that's tables there, no surprise. But what's really cool is that it matched the header and opened up that information. Now I did need to know what the header was in that scenario, but it's pretty awesome. We could also just write a small formula. So in another column, I could type equals, select the cell containing the data type, put in a period, that full stop, and I get this nice list of columns. And you can see the data type icon next to the column name there. So maybe I will select the team that they were a member of and press my tab key and enter just as you would when you write formulas through table data. So a few different approaches there for accessing the information if you want to display it as a column on a worksheet. But let's now look at how you can write some real formulas and access that information without creating that column on the sheet. And let me just delete those columns so that they don't distract us from our mission here. We won't need those. So here I am back on the fundraiser dashboard. And let's begin with a simple sum function, but then move in to an XLOOKUP and a filter function example. So for cell J2, we will begin a sum function and we want to access the miles column. Now we will do that by typing competitors because that is the name of the table. That was our query name that we imported. Then we open up those square brackets to access participants, which is the name of the column, just like you would access any table column in the formula. Close off the square bracket. And then here comes that new element, although we did see it a moment ago, which is the period, that full stop. Then the name of the column, which is miles, close off the sum and run it. And I've summed the miles using a column which is not actually available on the worksheet. It's held within that rich data type, that combined column. Pretty awesome, hey? So let's take that another step further. I'm in cell J4. We want to return the winning team. Now I'm going to use X lookup here. The lookup value is Angela's name. That's cell AH2, comma, the lookup array. Now that is the array of names. So competitors, open square bracket participants, close, and then name is the column, comma, the return array is the team name, because I want that winning team. So it's competitors, participants, and then team. And we have the winning team returned, something special. Now for this final example, which I think is going to be a really good example here of the use of these data types in formulas, is that I want to use a filter function in cell E9 to return the name of the member of staff in the order of that team by the miles they ran and walked. Now, rather than go through this formula completely right now, you can see for the other three teams, this is already working. So let me just come over to one of the other cells. I'll copy that formula, paste it in here, and just say a few words on it. So I have other videos that show how this works. And remember, the file is available for you to interrogate yourself. But for the purpose of this video, I want to focus on the use of the data types. So this is using the sort by and filter functions. 
The filter is just making sure that it's only the names from that team. This team is Excel Life. And then that has been sorted by the miles column of that data type. So the names of the participants are listed in that order. What is really interesting here is that the returned range is the entire data type. You can see it says competitors participants. Now let me just show that if I was to change that to dot name, and let me just change these references from T8 to the correct team name. Otherwise, I'll get the never merge team. Then I will receive this. I receive a list of the participants' names, which is great. That's what I want. But instead of just returning their name, if I go back to that formula, by listing it as participants, it returns the data type. So that means that on this dashboard, I can even click the data type icon and access that extra information. We get this lovely card coming up so that I can see the miles converted into kilometers. I can see their ID number, the charity they ran for, etc. All this extra information. So these rich data types are really cool in reducing that clutter on the sheet, but making information accessible. I hope you found this video useful. Please check out some of my other videos at this channel. And if you haven't subscribed, click that subscribe button so that you will be notified of any new Excel videos.